And welcome to the Daily Space Weather. Looking at the sun in 193 angstroms, we see zero sunspots, diffuse coronal hole in the south. Otherwise, not a lot going on. We did see some geomagnetic unrest, massive blizzards, a tornado in Davis, California, and more. Let's look at another view. How about the 304 angstroms view? Low levels of solar activity, folks. We see a 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 67 solar flux units. Now, we did see some big perturbations here in the magnetosphere. We're going to get to it in a moment. First, we're looking at the real-time solar wind. Looks like we had an ongoing magnetic connection there to that coronal hole, and it could be reestablishing itself right now. We see some big spikes in the plasma density here. Looks like the density was all the way up to 52 there for a moment, and that caused some big spikes in the magnetics of your planet. Solar wind speed is all over the place. Currently it's dropped down to about 450 kilometers per second, and solar wind density is something to keep an eye on. And when I say eye on, the pun's intentional, that could be a coronal mass ejection. And we're going to look at more data, but first let's talk about the funding of the channel. The funding of the channel comes from patron, patrons at Patreon. So please become one, get the updates first, and help ensure that these videos continue to exist as YouTube pays us exactly nothing for these videos. We know they show you ads. It's because the videos are monetized for Google, just not for us. So check out patreon.com slash smashamash and see updates before anybody else in the world. Again, 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 67. Solar minimum conditions persist. Let's talk about the thermosphere. Now, the thermosphere index is a measurement of the highest portion of the atmosphere. You could say, folks, this is the most direct the direct portion of the atmosphere that interacts with solar plasma, let's say. Now, if you look at the current state of affairs here, it is not as cold as it was around 2008 at the last solar minimum, and that is a good thing. Let's hope that this does not continue to drop, and uh, many indications are already here that cycle 25 has begun. Let's look at more stuff. And here's the magnetic environment. We're looking at the Gong 2 data, the top view ecliptic plane field plot. And as forecasted yesterday, we are seeing continued magnetic perturbations here. This one is probably a coronal mass ejection, and it's going to be fleeting and short-lived. However, the magnetic environment is going to continue to be sawtoothed and not smooth. Keep in mind this data is 1 hour and 43 minutes old, and this can change at any point. Notice the force lines at stereo A. They don't know which portion of the current sheet that they're connecting to there. As you can see, two field force lines. That orange line depicted from stereo A located over here under my cursor, or pointer. And there's that spiky GOES magnetometer, as we forecasted yesterday. And this is going to continue to be an oddity until this thing starts to chill out. Uh, the current sheet is experiencing a little tug of war, magnetically speaking. And let's move on to more data. The X-ray flux is still flatlined. We saw a small increase there in the background levels, and we still haven't seen an X-ray flare in the B-class range since July 7th. And next we're going to look at Stereo A's coronagraph. You can see the Right at the beginning of the video, you see the coronal mass ejection that we talked about yesterday. If you don't believe we find these things first, folks, you're probably not watching our videos daily. Anyway, there's that coronal mass ejection that occurred on the 27th. It's pretty diffuse. And let's look at more stuff. And there's a KP index. It's jumped up to four. And that's a result of the plasma. We actually see a signal in the solar wind this time, so.
Let's look at earthquakes next. And we're looking at the last 24 hours, four plus magnitude quakes. First on the list is about 23 hours ago, located off the coast of India, 4.7 magnitude. Next we've got an Argentinian quake, another deep quake there on the western coast of South America, where we've been warning for weeks indeed, as we keep seeing deep quakes there. Here's a deep quake in Mexico, heads up in southern Mexico for a larger quake at the surface. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a 5.0 at Columbia. Here's a 5.3 at the Carlsberg Ridge, southwest of India. Here's another 4.9 aftershock in the same place. And there we have the largest quake of the past several weeks here. 6.8 at Chile. Let's zoom in. And there's a location of that right off the coast. It appears to be a populated area. Let's check tsunami.gov. And there we see no current warning, advisory, watch, or threat. This one originally reported as a 6.9. And there's a tsunami information about that. Anyway, that quake occurring at 1558 Universal Time. So that's a change from yesterday, folks. A little bit of an uptick there. Still experiencing a 7-plus magnitude earthquake drought. Let's continue on the list. We've got a 4.9 at Japan, 4.0 at Chile, an aftershock of that 6.8, 4.2 aftershock at Chile, 4.7 aftershock at Chile. Here's a 4.0 at Kodiak, Alaska out in the Pacific Ocean there. Another aftershock at Chile at a 4.3 magnitude. Here's a 4.8 at Indonesia. Another 4.4 at Chile, a 4.5 at Indonesia. Followed by a 4.5 at Chile. Heads up South American viewers. 4.4 at Chile. Here's a 5.3 at Chile. Another aftershock, looks like the largest one so far, 4.4 at El Salvador. That one had an intermediate depth of 60.8 kilometers. 5.2 at El Salvador. That one closer to the surface. 4.3 at El Salvador. 4.9 at Papua New Guinea, 4.7 at Chile, another aftershock. And then we see one in Greece. We've seen an uptick there recently, 4.4. And here's a 4.1 in China and a 4.7 in the Philippines. This one coming in about an hour and a half before this video was shot. Let's look at the windy.com pressure maps. We like to start out at McMurdo Station because we are as cold as ice. Willing to sacrifice Google. Transcribe that, Google. Yes, we're willing to sacrifice Google on the altar of information. And we've animated the pressure map here, courtesy Windy.com, who has a great mobile app also, I might add. And I did add. Anyway, here's where pressure will be in about 24 hours. Right about here from the making of this video. Please be an asset, not a liability, if you are indeed in a disaster zone. Speaking of prepping, do you have a bicycle in your arsenal? Well, are you aware that when the power grid goes down and gas pumps stop pumping in about 24 hours, people will kill each other over a gallon of gas? It's true, folks. It's true. One of the things you may want to consider is a bicycle for prepping. Perhaps a commuter slash urban type. These bikes tend to have lugs for pannier racks on them, like this one. 
You can see the racks there on the seat stays, as well as by the rear hub there. Be the hero of your neighborhood and do the logistics if there is an extended grid down period. Be loved by your neighbors and don't report them if the weeds are too long in their yard. Here's your daily volcano rundown. Mount Aso, still producing an 8,000 foot ash plume, so don't fly over it in your ultralight. Uluwun is back on the list. Uh, let's see, increased seismic activity has been detected there. Nevado, Nevado del Ruiz in Colombia has produced some new emissions and Sabancaya exploding for months. And producing a 24,000 foot ash plume. Please do not do the Fosbury flop over that. Next, we're going to look at magnetosphere movies. And there is some funk that looks like a coronal mass ejection signature. First, we'll show you four hours of velocity. And right around 741, you're going to see a sudden spike. Bang! That's a density spike, mainly, folks. Next, we'll look at the density. You're going to see an extreme spike. This is very low density showing here and nearly all white. And right around 740 UT, there's going to be a giant pulse, and it's going to translate into a global geomagnetic pulse. Here it comes. Wait for it. 740 Bang! There's a big density spike there. That's when the solar wind density went up to 50 protons per cubic centimeter. Just enough for a measurement. And here's the pressure, and there's some serious pressure. Let me rock this back for you. Here's very low pressure, and here's that density spike. Going off the scale high pressure. And let's play the whole video to get four hours of data logged. Courtesy, University of Michigan Geospace Model V1.5, based on the Space Weather Modeling Framework. And there's that spike. And let's see what it does in terms of ground geospace magnetic perturbations. And there's the paused image. Let me rock that. This is what happens when current suddenly flows through the planet, folks. One thing to note here is we see the main perturbations are over the Siberian North Pole, not over the Canadian one. How that relates to anything, I have no idea, but please leave a comment if you have a theory. South Pole still looks like it's creeping into the southern Indian Ocean. Let's play the whole video and then move on. Actually, we're going to show you the polar view also. As we see obvious spirals on both poles. There's 6.30. There's 7 o'clock. And here comes this global spike. That's what happens when you see a sudden spike, especially into a low-density environment. Here's the view from the poles. There you can see that happening right at 740. Let's just play that area and then move on to more stuff. We don't want the video to be too long and we want it to be very dense. We're going to do another video this afternoon, folks, but there's only one coming this morning. So be prepared for a second video this afternoon. Here's a goes electron flux. We've been seeing very high electron storm levels here. And it would be no surprise to see this go back very high again. And we see lots of charging hazards. The relativistic electrons are up to a very, very high level again. Uh, something like 20 times the alert level. And here are the charging hazards, and they're significant, especially around the southern tropics. I also noticed a big, a big discharge spike in the ionosphere here. Probably no uh, surprise there. Show you the six-hour ionosphere movie image. You can see that sudden discharge spike.
that one occurring long before the sudden 740 UT solar wind density spike? Leave a comment if you think it's a tidal effect. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyway, there's the image at 8 o'clock, and it's looking actually pretty charged on the nighttime side right at that moment. Let's move out. Here's where stuff's located in the solar system. There's where it'll be in seven days, approaching a Mars opposition as Venus and Mercury swing back around for another pass. Let's go out a little farther. Here's where stars are located above my head. Let's update it. There it is. I like to draw in the ecliptic. You want to create a star map for yourself? Check out in-the-sky.org. By the way, Robitaille's back, and we're not going to cover it in this video, but Robitaille's back, and if you're a patron, you would probably already know that. People stunned by sight of tornado ripping through Davis. Yolo County. You only live once. Don't get in the way of one of these. You could have a shorter time living once. This one hit a golf course. A shocking sight for many people driving, living, and working near County Road 101A in Yolo County. Anyway, those things are pretty rare. And we've got links to the article below the video. So check that out after you check out our links. Historic winter storm dumps three feet of snow and smashes records for things like cold anomaly and snowfall. And it's not even October yet. And we're going to show you what it's going to look like at midnight tonight. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty significant scenario here. Uh, here's the view from Tropical Tidbits. And we're looking at right there. There's midnight tonight. Going to be seeing feet of snow. Obviously, there's... It looks like some of these estimates are actually kind of low on the GFS model. A couple feet of global warming falling on you there, folks. LightningMaps.org is telling us that Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin, are getting hit with some lightning. Check it out, lightningmaps.org, next time you hear thunder. It will even draw in the sound waves for you. Lightningmaps.org. Value-added service is coming your way. And this is the weather underground U.S. Doppler radar animation. And it looks like most of that snow is on its way out. Hoping all the best for cleanup and power reestablishment scenarios in places like Montana, who's declared a, declared a state of emergency. Heavy storms over central Minnesota there also. Let's take a look at the U.S. water vapor map. And there you have that. And it looks like that dry air is going to be pushing that moisture up into Canada pretty soon. Still a bit of an atmospheric river flowing there. And we're going to zoom in on that convergence zone as that's pretty violent. And we don't condone violence on this channel, folks. We only view graphic depictions of it in the form of weather. As there's quite a bit of it. Look at that convergence zone. That is serious. Massive pressure gradients happening there. Probably producing some damaging wind and hail. Please leave a comment if you've been exposed to these storms. Next, we'll go a little farther from home before we return by looking at the eastern jet streams. Meridional jet stream flow at its finest, folks. Never say I sound like Obama again, a guy who cannot compose a coherent sentence off of teleprompter. Here's the Western world's jet streams. Moving on. And thanks, Smash Team, 
for tuning into the video. Stay tuned for some bonuses where we talk about all kinds of things like scams. So transcribe that, Google. Google, Google, scam. Google, Eric Schmidt, scam. Google, scam. It's a scam. YouTube's been ruined since 2006. We don't only offer complaints, we offer solutions, such as DuckDuckGo.com, the search engine that won't store your personal information and won't follow you around with ads and won't track you even when you're not in private browsing mode. If you'd like objective search results, go there. Don't be scammed by the largest junkware manufacturer in the world, the owner of about 60% of Earth's servers, Google. They're screwing you. And if you think they're paying me to make these videos, think again. We found the second fastest pulsar to be spitting out gamma rays. We're just giving you a blurb on this one. It's got the catchy name of PSR J0952-0607. And this is the second fastest spinning pulsar in the Milky Way that we know of. We've only got a margin of error of 300% of determining the distance to this object. Links to this article below the video. And we're going to have a special edition of that is censored and that is sinkhole, but stay tuned for one bonus feature before we end this particular video. Don't assume I'm evil because I'm wearing orange. Orange men are not always bad, folks. We're looking at 171 angstroms. And there is a little bit of activity there in the south. Let's zoom in. Could turn into a sunspot, and if it does, it's most likely going to be a cycle 25 sunspot. Look how far away it is from the equator. We are out. It's about that time. And we thank you for viewing the video. Please like and subscribe if you appreciate the content. Press the notification bell and perhaps view the premieres with us. Thanks again, viewers. Thanks especially patrons, other donors. We appreciate that. We appreciate your attempting to understand the distinction between being censored and a sinkhole. And we appreciate your staring at the sun. Remember when you're doing so, don't drink. And if you drink, do it anyway. Just don't drive. Use the proper instruments like the SDO. And remember, since it'll never be now again, may the solar wind be at your back and the atherosclerosis absent from your veins.